Well, hi guys, it's that time. It's our Bible teaching snippet of the day. Well, today I want to go over to John chapter 6, verse 44, and read one verse, and then I want to expand and maybe draw out, and yes, I am maybe using a little bit of a pun today, draw out some deeper meanings to this one verse. Let me start by saying this. I'm going to read it in the Disciples' Literal New Testament. And what that means is that the translators have not added a lot of extra words to try to help us understand what they believe the Scripture is trying to say. Because when they add words in, what they're doing is translating it through their own theology of what they believe the Bible is trying to teach. So I like it in this because it's not trying to tell us something that a man believes, but it's just letting Scripture say what Scripture says, okay? Now, the second thing I want to make sure I say before I read it is this is in red, and this is Jesus, our Lord, talking, okay? So let me read this to you. Here we go. No one is able to come to me unless the Father, having sent me, draws him, and I will raise him up on the last day. Okay, now, let me talk just a little bit about this verse. You know, when I was a wet-behind-the-ear baby Christian, I thought what this verse was saying, because this is how I heard it taught, is that no one can actually hear and respond, and I mean hear like with their heart, the gospel message, and respond to the gospel message unless God has kind of determined that it's time for that person to get saved. Okay, so basically, uh, there's a little bit of Calvinism mixed in to that idea behind that verse. And what is Calvinism? Well, that's a good question. Calvinism is the uh, small denomination of people who follow the belief system of John Calvin, okay? And what John Calvin, the Calvinist, believe is that God created the majority of human beings to be lost, never to be born again or in the family of God, but they were born to be destroyed and go to hell. And he has uh, planned to save only a small amount of people uh, and only the people that God has predestined to be saved can respond to the gospel and be saved. And all the other humans are throwaways. Now, this is a good part for me to stop and say this. If that is true, that actually makes God the Father and Jesus Calvinist as well, okay? So they do pick and choose who they love and who they do not love, okay? And they don't care how any other human responds or cares about them. It's just about who they pick and choose to be in the family. Uh, the Calvinist actually used this verse as proof scripture that not everybody will be saved, by the way. Okay, now I want to make sure I say this as well. Did you know that God the Father sure did bankrupt heaven by giving his most valuable possession, his only begotten son, so that people could be saved? He sure did waste the most valuable thing he had to let all of humanity basically perish except for a small portion of people. Let me give it to you in a in a in just an analogy. So, you know, uh, my husband and I, we have six or eight kids, right? And I knew from the moment that I conceived these children that Keith and I would not, would not accept or allow but two of our eight kids to be actually children to us and us raise them up, and then be in our family and be our children. I have predestined only two children out of my eight kids to actually be a part of my family. The other six children, even before I conceived them, I predetermined that they were going to be lost. They were never going to know me. I was never going to accept them. And no matter whatever happened to them in their life, I would never be there for them. That's basically what we're believing when we think that about God. Okay, so here's what I want to talk about now. This word draw, this is so important because we don't understand what Jesus is saying here. So I'm going to give you the deeper meaning of no one is able to come to me unless the Father having sent me draws him. Now this last sentence is very, very important. And I, Jesus, will raise him up on the last day. 
All right, let's see if I can just do a little bit of verse, uh, bringing some verses in on this to show you that Jesus is not talking about that he's going to pick and choose different people to draw to him. He's talking about drawing all of mankind to himself in this verse. So let me go over, and I want to read to you all, again in John chapter 4. Now let's remember now what I just read you is before the cross, and Jesus is making uh, statements about what he's, his purpose is here. He's, he's going to, because the Father has sent him in his finished works, he's going to draw all mankind to himself. This is what this verse is actually saying. And then he finishes up and backs it up and says, and I'm going to raise him up on the last day. Now, that word him, unless God draws him, did you know that word can mean him as singular or them, plural, more than one? But that's not the teaching today. What I do want to bring into this verse right now, uh, this teaching is John chapter 12, verse 31 and 32. Now watch this. Now, Jesus is talking. He's getting ready to be arrested, beaten, uh, and hung on the cross. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Now here's the important part. And if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all to myself. Now most Bibles say I will draw all people to myself or all mankind to myself. I want to show you though in the disciples literal, this is what I just read it in. Do you see down here that this word is in italics? I will draw all to myself. Okay. And the word people is in italics. So what this verse actually says, if I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all, A-L-L, -L, all to myself. I remember when uh, I was studying some of the materials from Andrew Womack's ministry, and I was on his audio site, and I'm going through all his archives. And he brought to uh, everyone's attention that the word people, or all man, all men to myself, the word men, or all people, has been added. What it actually says, I will draw all to myself. And Andrew teaches that it means I will draw all judgment to myself because it's in context. I'm going to propose this to you. It don't need any word added, period, okay? What Jesus is saying here, he's going to draw everything to himself. He's going to draw all man to himself. He's going to draw all judgment to himself. He's going to draw all, uh, all things, all creation, everything, everything that he breathed into existence. He's going to put his Jesus net over and draw it all back to himself and bring us back to a full restitution. Let me see if I can find my little supporting verses that I want to show you about this, okay? Uh, it was talking about in uh, here. I, let me read the footnote here out of the Passion Translation of John 12, 32. I will draw all things to myself, or I will bundle up everyone and everything next to me. Jesus also drew all of our judgment to himself when he died for our sins. Uh, the judgment became the payment for the guilty. Okay. So that, that's the footnotes there. Uh, and let me uh, see if I might want to read this. Yes, I do. I think I want to read this in the uh, Amplified Classic real quick. And this is, uh, it says, uh, Now the judgment or the crisis of this world is coming on and sentence is being passed on this world. Now the ruler, the evil prince of this world, shall be cast out and expelled. And if I, when I am lifted up from the earth on the cross, I will draw and attract all men to myself. And you see the word men was added into this, and it is not in original scripture, but I want to see if I can find uh, where it talks about 
and I apologize, I, let, let me just skip over to here. I wanna talk to you about the drawing, that word draw, I will draw all men to myself. I said this in another video, so I'm just gonna stop and say it one more time. I printed this off and I, drew, I pulled up all of the times that the word uh, in the Greek is used here and it's helkuo, I don't know how, it's H-E-L-K-U-O. And the meaning of that really means to drag, to draw or drag. And I even said this in another video. It's like when the guys were on the fishing boats and they had these huge nets and it took two men standing apart to sling it out as hard as they could out into the Sea of Galilee. And it's actually a lake, by the way, the Lake of Galilee. It's not a saltwater bed, okay? It is a... Uh, natural water, uh, fresh water, okay? So it's not salt in the Lake of Galilee. So they throw these nets and they're standing apart, huge nets. I've been on a boat in uh, the Lake of Galilee and actually in March of next year, I'm gonna be back in uh, the Holy Land. But they would throw these huge nets out into the water as far out as they could and they let it sink to the bottom, okay? And then they drag everything that that net can pick up back into the boat. And it may have uh, different types of fish that they do not keep. Some fish they do keep. It might even have a little bit of trash in it. But the thing is, is that same word right there is used in Scripture when, all right, uh, when it talks about that they drew the nets to the land. And it said here, and Peter went up and drew the net to the land. And what that's meaning is that something was thrown completely over caught up in the net, and it was dragged by the net into one place. And that is that Greek word that is used in, I will draw all to myself, okay? So what Jesus was saying in this particular verse is that he was going to drag everything and everybody, all things, to himself. I believe, let me see, I believe I have this pulled up in the... Uh, Bible of the, uh, no, I don't have it. I wanted to read that to you in the uh, Passion Translation. In the Passion Translation, it says, and I will draw everything and everyone unto myself. I love that translation of that because it gives you a full understanding that Jesus isn't talking about that one by one, the Spirit is going to go and maybe talk to a handful of people here and there, okay? Okay. And here's another thing we need to keep in mind about this. Did you know that when we think that we have to go out into the world and preach some message about you're a sinner and you're going to go to hell, say the sinner's prayer so you get your get out of hell free card, did you know that we have reduced the blood of Jesus and his finished work on the cross and his finished work through his resurrection, we have reduced it to the efforts of human beings determining who is saved and who is lost. And I can tell you right now, if I had eight children, I would not trust someone else to go to save my eight children and make sure that they were all dragged back into safety. And I would not lose not one of them. They would all come back to me because I personally would go get them and drag them back into my family. Uh, so we need to think about what we're maybe believing about some of these verses. Uh, you know, I've been reading in Romans uh, chapter 5, verse uh, 12, about how through sin and through one man, sin and death came through Adam. And see, so Adam drug all of mankind, all of creation, into this problem called sin and death. Jesus comes and he's going to throw the net over everything that Adam has done. He's going to undo what Adam has done and he's going to drag all things, all things to himself, okay? Drag all, everything, 
all of creation, all of mankind back into the kingdom of God, okay? Maybe I'll do a part two to this tomorrow because I really want to mine out some more scriptures. I've got like seven or eight pulled up. And here's the thing that I want to read to you tomorrow is Acts chapter three, verse 21. And there's some other scriptures where Jesus talks about that all things have been entrusted to him by the Father. So I want to do part two on this tomorrow, and I'll hit on those scriptures, okay? I love you, and I'll see you right here. Bye-bye.